I will reveal to you in this video which muscle is being referred to here and how you can stretch it best. So join in right away. This video is about the hip flexor, which is so, so important. The hip flexor is a large muscle, a two-part muscle, which is attached here to the thigh, then runs over the groin, and one part goes into the ilium. Herein, and the other part continues to the lumbar spine, so it goes through the entire abdominal cavity and affects it. When the muscle is activated, when it shortens, then the leg is lifted. So when it is strained, when you control it, it lifts the leg at that moment. Where we sit, we practically have our leg raised all the time. Yes, in that position, that means it is constantly shortened and it wouldn't be a problem if it were balanced out. But we sit too much and hardly compensate in our everyday lives, which is why there are also huge problems, especially as people get older. What exactly happens when the lumbar spine and pelvis are pulled forward as the tension increases and people stand up because the flexibility decreases, almost becoming stiff and so on? and then the body has to counter tension at the back. At the level of the hip joints, it must counteract with the gluteal muscles and above with the deep back extensors. And as you may know, the back extensors, the deep ones, and the gluteal muscles are drastically tense in many people today. Probably when you are at the masseur or masseuse and let yourself be massaged through, they always say, wow, there is always a hard tension in there then you know that it is also the case with you. The body can train until very old age, as many studies have shown. Many people think that when they sit down and stand up, standing up helps balancing the sitting position. I see it differently because look, the angle is like this when sitting, it is neutral when standing, the balance would be to bring the leg back to extend it, then it would be relaxed in the neutral position. And that's why standing is not the compensation for sitting. You actually notice that, especially when you have a standing profession, when you are a salesperson, or when you stand a lot due to your profession. It often happens that after half an hour, after an hour, the back starts to hurt a lot. When you lie down for a moment, the pain will go away immediately. What is this related to? Our explanation is that the tension pulls forward and must be counteracted in the back while standing, causing fatigue in the muscles in the back until they start to burn. So, as if you wanted to hold a weight in front of your outstretched arm, eventually your shoulder burns. That is exactly the same issue in this case. And we have to understand what happens with the forces, because imagine your shortened muscles and fascia pulling you forward, the back has to be pulled against. This pulls here and this pulls here. Where does that pull? That pulls on the spine. The intervertebral discs are being more stressed than necessary. And disc herniations and similar things, disc protrusions are definitely favored by all these muscular forces around here that push all the load upwards. And the body not only reacts with tension, which one can feel, but also switches on pain when it notices that the intervertebral discs are too heavily stressed. Because in the moment when we eliminate the tension and the intervertebral discs essentially remain the same, only the tension is reduced and the strain, then the pain often disappears. And what can one do now? Simply balance. And for this balancing, I will now show you plenty of options from which you can then choose the ones that best suit you. For the first exercise, go into the four-legged position and place your hands a little further forward than you would normally go. And then you round the lower back, the lower back, so out of the hollow back. And with the rounded back, let yourself sag so that the groins move forward and the navel remains as far back as possible. And then you may notice it pulls right into the groin, upper end of the thigh or maybe into the back. 
If you want an even more intense stretch, because now both sides are being stretched simultaneously due to gravity, if you only use gravity for one side, then of course the intensity is higher. That means I am now going out with my right knee and move my right foot to the inside of the left knee and now you notice that you hang more on the left with the groin and have more effect. And now pay attention to my left foot, it's resting with the top of the foot and now I raise it and then you'll notice there's a change in the stretch somehow. And therefore, if you want it more intense, put your foot up. If you have problems supporting yourself with your arms, because of the arms, because of the shoulders, then my recommendation is to always try at least briefly. If possible, at least briefly, hold on until it is no longer possible, then switch and simply lay down with your chest on the couch or on a chair. Or the next option now is to go to the wall. Stand in front of a wall, stabilize yourself with your hands on the wall and now you are actually doing the same thing we just did in the hanging position. You bring the groins forward and the belly button back and increasingly overextend the hip joints now. And if you look now, basically I am just leaning on the ground, it is the same position but the advantage here is that you can proceed much more measured and sensitive. Because you don't have gravity acting all the time, but rather the stretching is triggered by the pressure of the hands against the wall. This is more easily adjustable. Then come out and feel inside. It may well be that your back already feels better and a little freer. If that's the case, then give a thumbs up, I would be happy, and write a comment about what you felt, and also share the video if necessary, because so many, actually everyone, has to deal with back problems. Every person who receives this video from you and tries it out will probably feel better and be grateful to you. You can do the same, but more intensely with one leg. That means you go back in front of a wall, Stabilize yourself a bit, for example, put your left foot back, and now again belly button back, groin forward. And keep going further into hyperextension, and then you notice here on the left, the groin higher into the pelvis, you feel the pull, that is the stretching. When you do it on one side, you can adjust it better, and you have more intensity on that side. By the way, you don't necessarily need to do the last two exercises against the wall. You can also do them standing on one leg, for example, at the bus stop. When you are waiting for the bus to make good use of your time, just stand there and push your pelvis further forward. Some people may look a bit silly, but the results are worthwhile. I have done it. Imagine a whole bunch of people in front of the bus stop doing the exercises together and the bus driver comes and wonders who are these people he is picking up. Another interesting variation, you go into the kneeling position, so now you have an approximately 90 degree angle in the knee, except for the toes, which makes the angle a little smaller. And this also stretches other hip flexor muscles. Because it's not just about the hip flexor, which is the most well-known and important and largest, but there are other muscles that have similar functions, and one of them is now more involved, and that not only benefits your back, but also your hip, and it's good for your knees. You go back into this position, hands on the lower buttocks, and then, as always, groin forward and belly button rather back. And you go into the stretch like this. If you feel unsure about doing this on your knees, you can also do it in front of a wall. That means if you are at the wall, you take your hands against the wall and stabilize yourself a bit and practically push yourself back against the wall. In the next exercise, you need to spread your legs and go further into the stretch. And you will be surprised at first and wonder where is the stretch in the back bend. 
We don't need those here because many people have trained the hip flexor so short through this unbalanced sitting that it also gets stretched when spreading the legs. That is very exciting. Now feel in. Go forward and feel inside to see if the stretching decreases and if it increases again when you stand up. And if there is more tension when going up, then this is an indication that the hip flexor is involved in this stretch, because when going up towards hyperextension, it is practically challenged. And if it is too short, then you will notice it. So go calmly and nicely forward. There is still a difference, because if you only stretch the adductors, so these muscles on the inside of the thighs, then the stretching sensation is in this area. And the hip flexor does feel the stretching sensation practically deep inside here, pulling up a little bit here. You can tell by that, if you are already sensitive enough, to distinguish it. What you are seeing now is such a classic position in kneeling stance. You only need to pay attention if you continue moving forward and increasingly hyperextend here in the right hip joint. You must make sure that you avoid going into excessive lordosis as much as possible, because otherwise you will avoid the stretching. So here again the rule applies, groin forward, belly button back, which we have been emphasizing the whole time. Look, and this is the relaxed version, but an incredibly intense stretch, because now you are practically stretching while lying down, resting, it is ideal for after work to sleep more relaxed at night. You simply lie on it, the back hero is adjustable to different heights and you always adjust it so that the stretch is still just bearable and lie on it at least two minutes. You can find information about the back hero here. Now I have shown you a lot of options, try them all out and if you feel with one or the other, wow, that could suit me well in terms of intensity, your body actually notices right away. And now let's do an exercise together in real time. It doesn't matter what position you are in, I will go into this stance here. You can do the same if you want to try it out. One leg back and now I am going to stretch the left hip flexor. You go back like this, focus on the navel, which wants to go back, groin wants to go forward. Now you're going further into the stretch. You can leave the left hand down by the buttocks on the left side and the pubis should move forward. Belly goes back, groin goes forward, breathe nicely, deep in, deep out. And if you are in any other position practicing now, yes, it doesn't matter, just continue in your position. We are now going exactly into the original position. Working further in, belly button back, groin forward, searching exactly for the intensity that is just bearable. Yes, it still has to be fun just before it turns into stress, if you know what I mean. And now try to pull your left foot forward, pull it forward on the ground. You wouldn't succeed because you are standing on it, but now it is exactly this strength training that tightens the hip flexor in the stretch, and that is the valuable part. Relax again and go further into the stretch. And then again, your foot wants to go forward. You probably have to practice steering it, especially when you're standing on one leg like me. Try to, to relax again and go further into the stretch, a little further. And again, your foot wants to move forward, it wants to move forward, then you relax and continue into the stretch. And again, it wants to go forward, you relax and go further in and then slowly come out. No matter which exercise you were in, 
Try it out. And maybe you already feel a difference that should motivate you to do these exercises regularly. Hardly any other muscle in the human body should be trained, stretched and strengthened as often as we do with this one. If you want to have a great routine to mobilize the hip flexor, same topic, then please click here, here below, you can subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done it yet, do it now and don't forget to activate the alarm bell.